Namaste, good morning, and we hope that you are keeping safe and keeping healthy and welcome once again to the 98th episode of Dekho Kopna Desh. We are getting there, we are just close to the 100, the nervous 90s, but then no, we are not nervous and neither are our presenters. Where are we going walking today? We're going to do a very different journey. You can see something behind me. I'm not going to tell you where it came from. I'm going to tell that right at the end of the session or I'm going to ask one of the presenters to do that. But today we are going to be walking in something very unique, something very distinct and something that we are extremely proud as a land to have be a part of because we keep telling you incredible India is truly incredible. There is nothing that we don't have in India, right? But we are therefore taking you today to a very different journey and walking with the tribes of India. Now, what is so unique about the tribes? What is it that sets them apart and yet makes them so much a part of our society, a part of our country, a part of us, a part of our culture. I'm sure half the time we don't even realize the wisdom that sometimes we've taken over from our tribal uh, brothers and sisters and have just uh, you know, made it a part of our mainstream. And how have we done that? How do they still keep their uniqueness and how we should help them to keep their uniqueness? Don't we all like to do that? Don't we all like to keep our, those little ethnic things very, very special for ourselves. So that's where the respect for the tribal culture needs to be also brought in while we walk through these steps today and walk along the tribes with three presenters. You're familiar with a couple of them, but for the benefit of those who possibly not tuned into earlier of the episodes, we have Dr. Sachin Bansal. And Dr. Sachin Bansal is not new on the team at all with Dekhov Nadesh. He and his wife, in fact, have done some amaz amazing presentations. They walk you through so many cities of India and telling you about the history of India. But today, there is a new kind of a theme that he's going to talk on, the regenerative travel. We're going to ask you, Sachin, of course, later, because I got a lot of questions saying some loved it, but still they had questions, what is regenerative? Is it in the context of COVID or is it otherwise? So how do we really go about, uh, you know, recovering from COVID, etc. And uh, so Sachin, welcome and thanks for joining us once okay, again right. in Dekho Apna Desh as we march towards the, the magical figure of 100. And uh, Himanshu, you've been with us earlier also. And so welcome once again. You've been one of our youngest uh, presenters and you continue to remain so. So I'm so happy to have you again with us. But most interesting person that we have, I would say, and it's not taking away from Sachin and Himanshu at all, but we have uh, Professor Dr. Venkatesha. He is joining us from Bengaluru and he is a professor of, um, he's going to tell you what he's a professor of. I was told by him that he was actually teaching physics for almost 18 years. Now, what is a physicist doing in a webinar on travel? Well, he moved on and he became a professor in folklore. And so how was the switch from physics to folklore? Why it happened is also something I will request Professor Saab to share with everybody. Because, you know, these are those journeys of people's lives, which sometimes for a lot of fence sitters, just make that much difference in how you do the journey of your own life. So we hope Professor Venkatesha will be sharing why did he switch from physics to folklore? And so today, let's uh, move on. But then before we move on, I must tell all of you that in India, we have something called the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. We also have TriFed, who are doing some amazing work in the area of uh, tribal uh, preservation of tribal culture, promoting them, promoting their foods, promoting their arts and crafts. I have one behind me. But then we also have had a history of people representing their tribes and being very much a part of the India's independence movement as we kind of fought with the colonial uh, rule. And there are museums in India. From what I know, Typhoon has about 121 museums spread across the country, some larger than the others, some better preserved than the others. But the work in progress continues. And we look forward to all of you supporting this initiative of the government of India, of the universities like the university that is represented by uh, Professor Venkatesha, Dravidian studies where folklore is being studied with so much detail. So don't forget to include these very unique, uh, you know, I would say products of our country from the tourist perspective. And why we should do that is something the three presenters are going to tell you today about. So Dr. Sachin Bansal, I'm going to pass on the web stage to you first to take us on this amazing, beautiful journey. Viewers, enjoy it. 
support us and if you by chance need to log off in the middle because you have something else to do we understand a one hour session could be a long session we are there on youtube we are there on the ministry of tourism's dekho apna desh website share it with your friends share it with your family then when you are actually traveling do spend that one hour learning from the amazing presenters that we keep bringing to you every saturday morning so enjoy the journey thank you ma'am and ministry of tourism for giving us this opportunity uh this time we are traversing through a different terrain unfolding a different facet of tourism today uh, we are presenting uh, walk with try which is an intellectual property of our organization city explorers and is also dedicated to the friends of nature who stay close to the natural habitat india is home to dozens of natural parks and hundreds of wildlife and bird sanctuaries and hundreds of tribal communities India is one of the few countries of the world endowed with an array of tourism resources from biocultural diversity to a wealth of histories and antiquities. In this session we take you on a journey about some of the tribes of our country. During the webinar we shall be touching upon various aspects of the tribal culture, their rituals, practices, cuisines and much more. It is a must to mention that given the diversity of our country and the communities Uh, we shall try to cover as much as possible keeping the time constraint in mind just the way on ground experiences are conducted keeping in mind the sentiments of the locals this webinar is also curated keeping in mind the different thought processes historical trajectories that our tribal communities have recorded in the past our aim is to appreciate and nurture and promote tourism with due respect to responsible sustainable and regenerative tourism tourism is one of the world's largest industries it has multitude of impacts both positive and negative on people's lives and on their environment hence it is of utmost necessity that we respect the socio cultural authenticity of our communities conserve their built and living cultural heritage and traditional values and contribute to intercultural understanding walk with tribe follows the path of sustainable tourism that is ecologically maintainable in the long run promotes indigenous cultures and work with locals our motto is to make minimal use of the environmental resources that constitute a key element in tourism development maintaining essential ecological processes and helping to preserve natural heritage in india we have witnessed a gradual transition in the way the tribes have been addressed they have been known as adivasis tribes and the indigenous people all the terms are used as collective term instead of individual name the term adivasi derives from hindi word adi which means of earlier times or from the beginning and vasi means inhabitant or the resident adivasis are not a homogeneous group there are multiple distinct groups there are many theories around the tribes and the tribal communities many claim that they were pushed into the hill area after invasions of the indo aryan tribes approx 3000 years ago before the arrival of the british in many areas of the tribal chiefs were important and significant people they enjoyed a certain amount of economic power and had right to administer and control their territories in some places they had their own governance power and local rules on the land and forest management the lives of tribal groups changed during the british rule british colonial rule in india triggered a period of intense rebellion amongst the country's indigenous groups multiple tribal conflicts occurred in the british provinces and many historians have documented how new colonial policy gave rise to widespread unrest when the british expanded their control the conflict over forest also began with the introduction of the forest act of 1878 subsequently amended in 1927 shifting cultivation grazing and hunting were all banned thereby eliminating the livelihoods of those living in around the margins of the forest the tribal population believed in retaining their existing rights and strongly opposed the british rule thus began a journey of safeguarding themselves from the colonial power much before india's first war of independence in 1857 different tribal communities came into action a summary of the tribal rebellions during the british rule in india is discussed in the following slides over to my colleague himanshu to take this forward as the british tightened their control the dissent among peasants and tribes escalated when their grievances were not redressed by the company officials they joined hands in protest the uprising happened in 1783 in rangpur district uh, they attacked the courts looted grains and released prisoners 
for a whole five weeks, these uh, areas were under the control of the rebels who appointed a Nawab and other officials for running a federal government. One of the main leaders of the revolt was Kena Sarkar. They forbade all revenue payments to the company. Ultimately, the uprising was put down by the British and many rebels were killed. The second major tribal uprising documented in the pages of the history was that of the Bhils. Uh, they were mostly concentrated in the hill ranges of Khandesh. The British occupation of Khandesh in 1818 enraged the Bhils because they were suspicious of the outsiders' incursion into their territory. This uprising took place under the leadership of Sevaram. The unrest kept erupting repeatedly and went on in 1825, 1831, and 1846. The third uprising that we ought to mention is that of the coal tribes. Historians choose to define these by different terms like uprising, rebellion, mutiny, revolt. The coal uprising took place in the Chota Nagpur region during 1829 to 1839. This was a reaction to the economic exploitation brought on by the system of the land tenure and administration introduction by the English East India Company. The tribes in the region had no rulers and their lands were divided according to the families that were bound by the parhas or conferences. With the application of new land laws under the colonial regime, the coals were exploited by outsiders moving into the area and taking up agriculture and commercial activities that were alien to the tribal culture. When talking about the tribal uprisings, one cannot miss mention the Mapilas or Mopla rebellion. The Mapilas were cultivating tenants, landless laborers, petty traders, and fishermen. When British East India Company established their rule and new land revenue administration over Malabar coast, it brought hardship in the life of the Mapilas. They revolted against the state and the landlords. The British armed forces swung into action to suppress the rebels, but failed to subdue them for many consecutive years. One of the most popularly known uh, rebels, uh, rebellions was the Santhal Rebel. It started on the June 30th, 1855. And when the rebellion was eventually suppressed by the colonial army, the rebellion was led by the four Murmu brothers, Sidhu, Kanhu, Chan, and Bhairav. The rebellion began as a reaction to, the, to end the revenue system of the English East India Company, along with many other factors. Moving on, to our next tribal community, which rose against oppression of the colonial powers were the Mundas. In 19, 1899 to 1900s, from the southern region of the Ranchi rose the one called Birsa Munda. The rebellion, which began as a, a religious movement, gathered political force to fight against introduction to federal, zamindari tenures, exploitation by moneylenders and forest contractors. To bring about liberation, Birsa gathered a force of 6,000 Mundas armed with swords, spears, battle axes, bows, and arrows. He was, however, captured in the beginning of February 1900, and he died in jail in June. The rebellion had fallen, but Birsa entered the realms of legend. The legend of Birsa Munda is well documented in a short documentary by the Ministry of Travel Affairs. We have a video, a video here for all of you to watch. झारखंड के भगवान हैं बिरसा मुंडा झारखंड जनजातियों की जमीन और संपत्ति को लेकर 19वीं सदी में यहां अफरा तफरी का माहौल बन गया छोटा नागपुर में बाहर से आकर बसने वाले लोगों ने यहां रहने वालों की काफी जमीन हथियार ली जिसका व्यापक विरोध किया बिरसा मुंडा ने उनकी अगवाई में दूसरी बार विद्रोह 1898 में शुरू हुआ और कई जगहों पर जनजातियों को संगठित करके उन्होंने अपने पारंपरिक हथियारों के साथ अंग्रेजी हुकूमत का पूरी ताकत से विरोध किया बिरसा को जिंदा या मुर्दा पकड़ने के लिए उस समय 500 रुपयों का इनाम घोषित किया गया अंग्रेजों ने बेहद शातिर तरीके से तकरीबन 32 मुंडा सरदार विद्रोहियों को 
बहला फुसलाकर या जबरन आत्मसमर्पण करने के लिए मजबूर किया और उन्हीं लोगों से बिरसा के गुप्त ठिकानों का पता लगवाया बिरसा गिरफ्तार कर लिए गए भीषण प्रताड़ना की वजह से वो जेल में ही बीमार पड़ गए और आखिरकार 3 जून 1900 को उनकी मौत हो गई। बिरसा मुंडा आज भी इन लोगों के लिए स्मिता के प्रतीक हैं, जिन्होंने मानवीय सम्मान और स्वशासन की अपराजय चेतना से समस्त जनजातीय समाज को प्रेरित किया From the historical chapter, let us now move to the present times. We are going to take you through some of the well-known tribal communities across the country. Of course, due to paucity of the time, we will not be able to cover all tribes and their sub-tribes, but just a glimpse of their our diverse communities. First, let us share with some of you facts and the figures. As per the last census in 2011, the total population of our tribes is 10.43 crore. which accounts for 8.6% of the total population of the country states like madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha rajasthan gujarat jharkhand chatisgarh andhra pradesh west bengal and karnataka account for the highest number of tribal population which is approximately 83.2% of the total scheduled tribe population of the country followed by states assam meghalaya nagaland jammu and kashmir Tripura, Mizoram, Bihar, Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu, accounting for another 15.3 percent of the total. Let us now begin our segment: few prominent tribes of India. Thank you, Imanchu. Starting with the Bhils, some scholars suggest that the term Bhil is derived from the word Billa or Billu, which means bow in the Dravidian lexis. the term bhil is used to refer to various ethnic communities living in the forest and the hills of rajasthan's southern part and surrounding regions of western india highlighting the popularity of the bow and arrow as a weapon among these groups i'm sure many of you heard about the traditional uh, folk dance ghumar the dance form also belongs to the bhil community our next stop is on the munda tribe The Munda tribe mainly inhabited in the region of Jharkhand although they are well spread in the states of West Bengal Chhattisgarh Odisha and Bihar Munda generally means headman of the village apart from Christianity the Mundas have their own religion known as Sarna Sarna status stresses on the belief of one god Mundas believe in the supreme being known as Singbonga which means sun is god the sun god According to the Mundas the god saves them from external enemies and troubles of life we now move on to Bagas the Baga community is one of the particularly vulnerable tribal groups they mainly live in Chhattisgarh Jharkhand Bihar Odisha West Bengal Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh traditionally the Baga lived in the semi nomadic life and practiced slash and burn cultivation now they are mainly dependent on the minor forest produce for their livelihood tattooing is an integral part of Baga culture according to their tradition every age and body part has a specific tattoo reserved for specific occasions talking about the madhya gonds or madhya they speak the madhya dialect of gondi and call their land madhya desh they practice shifting agriculture known as jhum again they are vibrant community spread in central and western part of india as we are speaking about central belt and the prevalence of the tribes in the region let me take you further close to their world personally speaking my journey and introduction to the tribes of our country started out with extensive travel and research in the tribal pockets of chatisgarh where i wanted to promote chatisgarh as a tourism destination my concept walk with tribe was an introduction to the world of tribal communities on the screen i have some captured movements from chatisgarh these tribes have preserved their cultural heritage for centuries now I had the opportunity to witness and interact with them about their beliefs and their rituals. It is interesting to note how beautifully each and every practice of these communities have their own practical logic. They have kept their traditions together. They have managed to keep themselves one with the nature. Rituals, festivities, settlements and cuisines are few tourism experiences that helps us understand the world of tribal communities. On the screen here is a glimpse of their daily food items. 
Since Himanshu has also done a lot of field work with me on this tourism product, I request him to take the following slides. As on the screen suggests, we are now talking about the Kokni, Kokna, Kukna, which is a tribal community found in Sahyadri, Satpura ranges of Maharashtra. There are various opinions regarding the origin of this tribe since no adequate research has been made. Kokna Kukni tribal society is an important part of the ancient primitive culture. We are now looking at the Santhal tribe. Santhals form a majority in the state of Jharkhand. Uh, they are also found in the states of Assam, Tripura, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, and West Bengal. Interestingly, they have quite a prominence in Bangladesh Rajshahi division and Rangpur division. They have a seasonable, seasonable population in Nepal and Bhutan too. The Santhals speak Santhali, which is the most widely spoken of the Munda languages. Since we have already spoken about the Santhal rebellion, the beautiful celebration of the Santhal community is captured in this video that we have for you. Music and dance are integral part of the Santal way of life. The musical talents of the Santal have encouraged the composition of songs to suit every occasion. Apart from devotional and festive songs, songs of love and longing also feature in their musical repertoire. Why instruments like the Burnham lend themselves to solo ballads? Festivals, celebrations and ritual observances are occasions for playing large drums like the Nagara, Dhak, Tamak, Charchari and Tumra along with cymbals, gongs and flutes. Dancing visits are often also exchanged between villages and take place for marriages, festivals and celebrations. Nagara, vast single membrane drums, leather hides stretched over wooden base are often mounted on small carts, allowing these to be transported simply to clearings in the villages or the nearest fairground and mela. The drummers strike a rhythm, exuberant in their movements, and soon the rich melody of these drums beckons the Santal to sing and dance. No special attire is required as boys and girls, young and old, join in. The resounding beats of the drums can only be described as spellbinding. As dusk fades, their rhythm blends with the tinkle of bangles and anklets of the dancers. The evening entertainment providing relief from a long day of work. On the slide is a marker of the tribal community. Yes, they are known as the Worli community. They live in the mountainous as well as coastal areas of Maharashtra, Gujarat border and surrounding areas. They have their own anis, uh, animistic beliefs, life, customs and traditions. And as a result of assimilation, they have adopted many Hindu beliefs. The Worli speak the Worli language, which belongs to the southern zone of the Indo-Aryan languages. They are famous for their artwork, which I'm sure each one of us know about. Talking about the Birhor community, the word Birhor means jungle people. Bir means jungle and Hor means men. Birhors are found mainly in the area covered by the old Hazari Bagh, Ranchi and Singhbhum districts. Some of them are also found in Odisha, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal. They are one of the smaller of the 30 tribes inhabiting in Jharkhand. The next on the list are the Korkus from Madhya Pradesh. The name Korku is originated from two terms, Koru and Ku, where Koru means person and Ku means alive. 
when combined it can be defined as a life member the korkus are believed to have been initially a hunter a hunter gatherer community who dwelt in the forest of the satpura range on both sides of the tapti river from madhya pradesh we move to chatisgarh and jharkhand to explore another tribal community called the korvas the korva community lives mainly on the border between chatisgarh and jharkhand a smaller a small number of korva are also found in the mirzapur district of uttar pradesh the tribe can be further divided into several subdivisions like the agaria than del and pahadi korvas they are majorly a hunter gatherer community we are talking about uh, the bison horn maria tribe the tribe is spread in and around jagdalpur in chatisgarh some parts of maharashtra and a few sections of madhya pradesh bison horn maria tribe got its name from the headgear worn by the men during dance this head ornament is made from bison horn and further uh, beautified with colorful beads as is shown on the slide while the men wear their colorful headgear women adorn themselves in colorful dresses and silver ornaments we are now moving towards the last tribe on the list the gonds the gonds are one of the largest adivasi groups in india they are spread over the states of madhya pradesh maharashtra chatisgarh uttar pradesh telangana andhra pradesh bihar and odisha some believe the word to drive from konda meaning hill in a similar manner to the cones of odisha the picture on the slide is a representation of their famous art work also known by the same name gond art this unique art form has a popular both international and internationally and now i hand it over to uh, professor venkatesha to take us to the nuances of the tribal uh, culture of the karnataka uh, good morning everybody uh, here is an introduction to tribal life in karnataka karnataka is a uh as you know it is southern state of india this state naturally is having three different type of topographical structure hilly forest heavy rain falling region which is known as malnadu the other one is the vast dracic plain land which is known as bayalusine and the third one is the narrow coastal region which is known as karavi these regions are not just distinguished by their topographical differences but also with cultural richness there are specific cultural centers spread in these regions it is identified that there are about 50 different tribes are living in this state i am trying to give you a brief note of various tribes and their cultural richness karnataka is a rich treasure house of folk knowledge system there are several tribes living in hilly forest region tribes in karnataka have got influenced by different social economic changes happened along with the evolution of human kind industrialization and globalization have made these tribes to come out of forest and to mingle with the village agrarian society which has resulted in change of their lifestyle many of these tribes have already suffered occupation shift and various regulations from different administrative governments have created different type of pressures on them and many of the tribes have almost developed rural agrarian caste structure by undergoing professional shift still i would like to introduce a few tribes in each of these regions who have very distinguished characteristics which tourists and interest to visit for observing rare and meaningful lifestyles there are many hard working determined personalities who have brought pride to these tribes sukri bommagowda hailed from halaki okaliga tribe she is one such personality who has got a padma shri award for her uh, meaningful work uh, whom you can see on the screen city Halaki Okaligas and Hathalas are a few among them who lives in Malnadu region. Siti is an African Negro tribe living in hamlets in North Kendra districts. Halaki Okaligas are living in the slopes of the Sundas, covering Shimoga and North Kendra districts. Hathalas are living in almost all parts of Malnadu region and are having unique life leading skills. Siti tribe. 
city tribal community cities are unique african negro tribe living in north angola district it is believed that they have traveled from africa along with vasco da gama who reached calicut during 1498 uh, and settled in indian forest established their own identity here their tribal dance such as tarle dance tarle kumita is having specific importance Visitors will get enlightenment how one can live in forests by using its products without harming them. The slide shows their cultural richness. Tarle, Damami, Udubi, etc. are prominent dance forms famous in this particular region. In Mysore and Chamaradnagar region, we are having many tribes living in those forests. Chamaradnagar is having dense forest region. in which solifas kadukurva jenukurvas and irulikas are used i am trying to introduce specific tribal huts which have unique features different from cities towns and agrarian based villages of india as far as the tourist interest is concerned mysore is having wonderful topographic structure blended with historically important monuments established with the advent of different cultural administrative governments Sri Rangapatna and Mysore have monuments related to Tipu Sultan and warriors of Mysore with a specific palace and newly made Kiaras Dam and Vrindavan Garden which have specific tourist attractions. If we able to include a few tribal hamlets of specific importance to these tourist spots, then the visitors will get introduced to the tribal life structure in their natural dwellings. Similarly, in plain land bayamsi i would like to introduce kadugulwas a semi nomadic pastoralist tribe and nasibeda a traditional hunter community living in chitradurga dandari and tumkur districts soligas and irulikas different type of tribal communities soligas are considering lord bidigiri ranganatha as their community it is interesting to see that this tribe shows a lot of devotion to this tribe the very native look of this temple for mysis certainly adds values to the tourist trip mane madeshwara hill irligar tribes are traditionally hunts with specific native techniques worth observing their method of rat hunting is unique they live in neighboring districts mandya ramnagar pass somana punita which photograph you are seeing on the screen is one of the very famous and attractive folk performing art of this region similarly patakonita puja konita and your two more art forms are worth observing in this region compare art form connected to malema desha so many of these tribes they are actually worshiping their culture and long epics are being sung around these particular uh cultural heroes different types of art forms are linked to these folk and epic narration will be done with the help of these performances kamsale is a dance performance with martial steps involved in it they use symbol and to its tune they sing and dance they sing the episodes related to the mahabharata this temple is in chamradhara district we can have a look at the video of this <laughs> which is covering most of about 13 districts are covered under this kadugula tribal community it is interesting to see that the belief systems of these communities are very interesting they have their own world view and think that the deities they worship are held responsible for their poverty or the comforts what they are having in their life therefore they do construct a bed house to the deity then that they built for their own living here is a comparison where the person is living and their life is yes 
Cardinal has informed earlier a semi nomadic pastoralist class. They were cow herders earlier. Now, due to occupational shift, they are shepherds. Their hamlets are unique in structure. The long folk ethics of Cardinal's are worth documenting. The lifestyle of semi nomadic pastoralism is worth studying. The cultural traditions of Cardinal's are very rich and hamlets are worth visiting. They worship their deities and construct a better temple to them than their own buildings. Here you can see the shrine of their deities. The concept of deities among tribes seems to be bit different than the agrarian world. They believe that sun, moon, tree, serpent, anthill, or any wild animal or other natural objects are totem for them, and they worship their ancestors. They have long epics which describe the life and miraculous deeds done by their ancestors Nepo to protect the present community. In general, Lord Vishnu or Lord Shiva are pan Indian deities. But Kartikulas have Sinjatpa, Yattapa, Chittapa, etc. as their deities. Bhamadeva or Brahmapa is also another deity. Bhamadeva Pauli at the Sarpandi is worth visiting. Bhamadeva is one of the prominent deities of Kartikulas, a semi nomadic tribe who were covering earlier, now suffering due to ecological change and effect to shift their tradition. Oral epics are documented in this particular way. The long oral epics are the rich cultural assets of these tribes. The experiences of senior generations will be codified and transferred to the next generation through oral literature. Lineage details are maintained by illiterate travelers, a dependent caste in Karnataka, who are also called as Pichikuntala in Andhra and Kaurat in Tamil. They got it recorded by some person who knows like you, but though they are illiterate, they know how to sing about all those things. And by memory, they are singing the lineages of many of the families. They maintain histories of families of the patron clans and castes. Traditions of the Hedava community. Hedavas, a dependent caste in Karnataka, are maintaining lineage details and also sing many folk epics and narrate folk tales. Here is a performance from Hedavas. You can have this thing. <laughs> Mailarlinga tradition is another important tradition on which we have to concentrate. The method of devotion shown by different communities differ for reasons of their own. It is commonly believed that by paying our body, we can exert bhakti to its maximum level. At the same time, according to many mythological details, the communities believed in. They are considering that the demons are actually killed or laid down by the incarnation of the deities. And those demon souls are actually wandering in this particular region and they are actually wanting for the human blood. By doing many of the deeds, by shedding the human blood, if, as a part of ritual, these people are believed that the demon souls are going to be appeased and the deities are going to bless the community for its prosperity. The specific and ferocious practices such as piercing iron trilogies through hind legs on every Vijay Vishnu period by Kansavira and lifestyle of Gaurava, the devotees of Mailara, all these things are worth observing. Temples at Mailara in Bellari district, Savadatti at Bhagavatpur, Tijapur Road are worth visiting on this occasion. Inner yogis and their practices. As we informed you earlier, there are plenty of folk tales, oral literature, oral ethics, and many other literary forms. And these items are being performed by various groups, which are actually meant for doing such lifestyle. The tribal communities in Karnataka have rich folk literature, which are used in world. Different art forms are worth introducing 
to the visitors to get a glimpse of great cultural tradition of Sikhism. Kinnari Jogis sing long folk tales and ornaments. They use Kinnari, a single string instrument, as an accompanying instrument for their singing. It is very interesting to see that these Kinnari Jogis are devotees of Daiki Renuka Elamma with mother tongue Marathi. Lives in Kannada language region in Karnataka and performs both in Kannada and Telugu languages. Many folk tales they sing runs for more than three nights. Usually, Jogi Kathi is patronized by nearby villages. Folk performing arts connected to ornaments. The visitors should get introduced to the rich folk tradition of this land. It is very necessary to introduce a few folk performing arts such as Yakshigana, Leather Puppetry, Kinnari Chogis, Nagamandala, etc. Of course, in India, Ramayana and Mahabharata are classical national epics of India. There are many folk forms of these epics. There are cultural specifics in each tribe. Many oral epics of tribes are being performed in different folk performing arts. It is seen in practice that each oral epic is being performed through a specific folk performing art. Say, Katamuriji Kata is through Gurra Kata, Jinjapanapada will be performed through Kaneyavaru, Madheshwara epic will be played by Kamsaleyavaru, Malana or Mailalinga Kata will be played by Vabu Kata or Gorovaya Kata, Yellamma's epic will be told by Saudiki Yavaru or Kinnari Jogi. And folk Mahabharata, we can see in Vidina. Let's go to the next slide. Floral drawings and Ekshigana performing arts. A narrow coastal region, Ravali is having many reasons to get established a specific spot for tourism. Coastal Karnataka is very famous for Ekshigana performing arts. Equal importance is there for Bhutakola, a popular religious performance. Nagamandala is another important performance of Crown region. In Bhutakola and in Nagamandala, it is believed that the spirit of the ancestors. It will come as impersonation on the priest, and the history of that particular cultural person, cultural hero, will be sung in the beginning of. Then the deity himself actually speaks to the devotees, and at the end, there will be blessed. There are plenty of pilgrim centers, including Sri Krishna Mata at Udupi and Kolluru Mukandika Temple at Karawali region and Gokarna in North, North, North Kannada district. The floral and wall drivers, Rangoli, Hase, Pitara, of Idiga community people are worth observing to know about the cultural practices and belief systems. Dolu Punita is a popular folk performing art of this. Kannur Takapa has taken this performance to Russia and other foreign countries. Nagaragane ritual practice. Nagaragane is a famous ritual practice in Kosovo Karnataka. Nagamandala is a performance similar to Sarpankali of Kerala. The other versions of Nagamandala are Ashnesi Mandala, Kadyanata, etc. A priest who impersonizes the spirit of Naga as of the devotees through this special performance. Tourism opportunity in Sagar region. Sagar is a small town of headquarters in Shimoga district of Karnataka. World famous joke falls in a nearby tourism spot to this place. Batte Malappa is a small village near Hosanagara, which is having an NGO in a regulated market to promote the artifacts made of tidy grapes and other handcrafted products which are worth visiting. The Gudi Kavas or handicraft community who works with Bendu, the plaster of Paris, and makes Bathinga, and also artists who work on handloot. It is worth visiting their workshops rather than their marketing shops. Sandalwood works are very famous from this particular region. Tourism opportunity in the whole region. These tribal heads. Visit can be made as an integrated part of tourism by including attractive tourist spots in such short journeys. As I mentioned earlier, Jogpals and Murdeshwara 
the spots of natural beauty we can look at the different temple towns which attracts visitors not only from across india but also from the outside dharmasthala okay subramanyam singeri udupi kolluru moodavidre karkala they all fall in one particular line where we can have a straight journey and these temples are identified not only just because they are temples attracting devotees they are actually patronizing different art forms which are related to the tribal people and dharmasthala is having one rural development unit in which it's actually giving a lot of support to tribal communities murudeshwara gokarna also are worth visiting yakshagana is patronized by temples like dharmasthala rathor tirupati etc kermani sanji got three natural awards for yakshagana performance tourism then blended with visits to a few tribal hamlets and workshops where crafty items are being prepared and addition of short live performances of selected folk artists adds not only attraction but also adds special value to our venture this is only a glimpse of rich less no this is only a glimpse of rich less known world of tribes of karnataka we can explore many more with this i express my sincere thanks to all the concert and thanks over to dr satish bansa once again thank you all and over to dr satish bansa thank you professor moving on to the next segment we now take you to the world of tribal festivals and their cultural uniqueness india is a land of festivals and fairs and their tribal festivities are an integral part of it as part of awareness and preservation the ministry of tribal affairs also supports many of these festivals let us start with sarhul festival this is the main festival of tribal population of jharkhand the verbal meaning of sarhul is worship of sal tree sarhul can also be redefined as worship of nature in which local people worship sita the wife of lord rama as dharti mata they also worship sal tree which is believed to be a abode of goddess sarna who protects village from all kinds of natural calamities and disasters moving on to chatisgarh this festival is celebrated each year in the last week of march within premises of brahmadeo temples located located at 135 kilometers from raipur the festival is held to honor king ramachandra as mentioned on slide this festival is significant in preserving tribal traditions moving on to orissa in this festival presiding deity is either karam a god or karamsani a goddess who is represented with a branch of karam tree it is celebrated sometime between the months of august and september in rituals people go to jungle and cut a few branches of karam tree a tribal priest offers germinated grams and liquor to dt who grants wealth and children and that's how the celebration is marked we now move to rajasthan to mark baneshwar festival this is celebrated in months of january and february by people of the bheel tribes living in rajasthan madhya pradesh and gujarat among others at the confluence of the mahi and som rivers the festival sees the worship of mahadev shiva as well as kalki vishnu from ritualistic singing of praises of the gods to gravity defying acts this festival displays the very magic of colorful rajasthan from the western india we move to the northeast and enjoy the hornbill festival this festival is held at the naga heritage village known as kisama which is about 12 kilometers from kohima all tribes of nagaland take part in this festival the aim of the festival is to revive and protect the rich cultural heritage of nagaland and display its extravaganza and traditions for visitor it means a closer understanding of the people and culture of the place and an opportunity to experience the food songs dances and customs of the people one of the major highlights of the festival is hornbill international rock festival which where local and international bands perform in recent times hornbill festival has been seen as a major attraction our next festival from northeast is mayoko it is a celebration of friendship and harmony between the various apatani villages the festival rotates between the eight apatani villages the tribe here are traditionally animist and they worship nature mayoko festival is celebrated to the extent and strengthen bond of family and blessed members with with fertility and fortune there is animal sacrifice as a custom of this festival this commences early morning with long prayers and festival is an annual affair in arunachal pradesh 
In our final celebration, we take you to Bangla Festival of Meghalaya. It is one of the most popular festivals among the Garo community. Bangla Festival is harvest festival held in honor of Saljong, the sun god of fertility. The celebration of Bangla Festival marks end of a period of toil, which brings good output of the fields. It also signifies the onset of the winter, also known as 100 Drums Festival. It is generally celebrated for two days and sometimes continues for even a week. People, young and old, dressed in their colorful costumes with feathered headgears, dance to the tune of music played on the long, oval shaped drums. Tribal tourism has been instrumental in creating various financial opportunities for the tribes living in the hinterlands. It has helped foster awareness uh, about the indigenous people in India. Uh, many of uh, whom face extinction, lack of opportunities, and social exclusion. Though not all tours need to take place in the heartlands of the tribal regions, some can be experienced at the dedicated museums too. We have listed some of the best tribal museums for you to visit. Starting with the, the Living and Learning Design Center, which is a pioneering effort of the Shrujan Trust to pre preserve, revitalize, and promote the glorious craft of uh, the heritage of Kutch. Uh, this museum is much more than it over there. Next, this incredible museum on your screen tells the stories of the local tribal heritage through full-scale models and colorful art installations and performances. The Madhya Pradesh Tribal Museum in Bhopal takes you uh, on an immersive journey through the culture of the local tribes of the state. Our third museum stop is in Odisha. The Odisha State Tribal Museum is regarded as one of the best tribal museums in India. Established in 1953, the Museum of Tribal Art and Artifacts, now known as the Odisha State Tribal Museum, celebrates the life and cultures of Odisha's 62 tribal communities located in Bhubaneswar. The museum has been conceptualized as Museum of Men. Exploring the down south, Araku Tribal Museum in Vaisa is a famous tourist destination situated in Araku Valley. The museum was started in 1996 and it offers a glance at the lifestyle and cultures of the tribal communities. Apart from being a picturesque hill town, Araku is famous for its Indian, indigenous tribal culture. Our final museum stop is at Nehru Centenary Tribal Museum in Hyderabad. It is a two-story museum. You will encounter the simple yet vibrant lifestyle of tribes from Andhra Pradesh. It houses lifelike sculptures of tribal folk going about their daily life around their bull carts and the market. While we are speaking of uh, the daily livelihoods of the tribal communities preserved in the museum, let us share with a glimpse of the daily course of the tribal communities in Odisha. Here's a short video of husking by the tribal woman. Husking is a daily activity for the Juang women. Within the Juang home, the motor for husking grain is located at the doorway. Sunlight streams in during the day, making the task at hand visible in the otherwise cool and dark house. The husking rod is made of seasoned wood. Fashioned by the men using simple carpentry tools, the rod has a heavy top that tapers into a slender working end. The end is usually clad with iron. Husking is a laborious activity that requires considerable strength and is usually undertaken early in the morning. Once the grain has been pounded sufficiently, it is winnowed to separate the shaft from the grain, which may then be used to prepare the daily meal. Other communities like the Langia Sora, Kutia Kand and Dangaria Kand also use husking rods to prepare grain. In addition to handheld husking rods, some houses also have larger husking machines that may be operated by foot. Here, the women are able to stand on one end and leverage their body weight to move the husking apparatus. Usually located in the veranda, the simple mechanics of these devices help the busy women husk a larger quantity of grain with less effort.
plays an integral role in our lives and rightfully so. So the food we ate is intricately intertwined with our culture. We can learn a lot about a particular culture by exploring their food. Let us take a sneak peek into the world of our nature born friends with their food offerings. The first one is trumbai, which is fermented soybeans. The pungent smell is mostly because of fermentation. It is not that simple to get fermented soybeans. The fermented soybeans are then cooked to serve trumbai. Our next dish is jado. This is very popular dish among the Khasi community of Meghalaya. Jado is red rice cooked with generous amount of pork meat. Sometimes it is also cooked with chicken or fish. Moving on, two famous tribal food items of Chhattisgarh's pastor is the chapdar chutney and dona pudga have made it to a renowned international food menu thanks to the celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay who loved them so much during his India trip that he decided to add uh, these items to his menu. Chamta chutney is a chutney made up out of red ants, which is deemed not only healthy, but also keeps diseases at bay. No oil is used in the cooking. Moving on, we have next food item is the bongolo chicken. Chicken in bamboo, a traditional form of cooking with uh, almost no oil and a little spice has finally become a popular dish which can be cooked in 15 minutes, that too with simple bamboo and coal. Bamboo chicken is prepared by stuffing the chicken in the bamboo shoot and then cooked on charcoal. Bamboo chicken is a traditional cuisine of Arapu Valley. Moving on, we have the last food item, which is very famous. It's known as the mahua. Mahua is a flower found in many parts of Odisha, Jharkhand, and few other states. An alcoholic drink is made with the flowers of the mahua. Many homes in the rural buster, especially those of the tribal communities, have a rudimentary pot still used for distillation and knowledge required to turn the flower into a potent spirit. With this, we conclude our walk with tribe. Over to Dr. Sachin Pansal to share the closing notes for the session. Thank you, Imanshu, and thank you, Professor, once again. Walk with Tribe is a pure tourism product created by CD Explorers. This is designed responsibly and delivered in a sustainable manner, integrating mantra of slow experiences and tales. Our larger intent is to empower tribes through cultural tourism across India. All these tribal groups are having varied cultures, and this diversity provides an opportunity for our country to enhance and benchmark responsible tourism experiences. We too support local communities in capacity building, skill development through our incubator program for holistic development. While concluding the webinar, I would like to sum up by saying that during these unprecedented times, we need to support our people, our grassroots level members, and bring awareness on tangible and intangible assets to show India. It is equally important to bring focus on nature and environment friendly initiatives. As an organization with our brands such as India City Box and India with Locals, we take innovative steps to showcase beauty of India and show diverse cultures to the wider audience. With this, I thank the Ministry of Tourism once again for providing us this platform and now hand over to ADG Ma'am for conclusion of the session. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been such an interesting journey. And so now viewers, you know where this came from, right? And who are the amazing people who actually created this beautiful piece of art. So it's, uh, you know, undoubtedly, it's been a lot of information and I'm reading comments coming in and people are like, there's just so much to absorb that they were finding it hard to even go along with the pace of the content that kept coming. So for all of you, who found it overwhelming because there was just so much, so much to be learned from today's webinar. Do not lose heart because as I mentioned earlier, we put out all our webinars as recorded versions on YouTube. The links remain on the Ministry of Tourism's website. So do go ahead and keep revisiting all the 98 episodes, in fact, that have happened, including the 98th, which happened today. The recording goes up after some time and so so you can just keep going and looking at them at your own leisure at your own pace but also something interesting that we want you all to do is that at the end of every episode at about the 11 40 40th minute or the 11 41st minute we actually uh, do something called a quiz we do it in collaboration with MyGov. And if you go on the website of MyGov, you'll find the Dekho Apna Desh webinar, episode 98, Walk with the Tribe. There are five questions that you need to take in 600 seconds. Now, don't get, again, daunted by the fact whether you got the answer right or not. It doesn't matter. It's the spirit that counts. You just have to remain involved with the whole process. Because when you take those five questions, 
whether you got the answers right or wrong does not matter as i said you will bounce back yourself a certificate of participation now what is a certificate going to do for you i'm not going to tell you what is going to do for you right now but it's going to make you feel really good it's your beautiful country it's your you know it's for you to feel it they were just collecting those uh, little small souvenirs items we will of course keep doing some other interesting things around all our sessions and webinars as we go along so do keep answering those questions and remain involved with the process keep telling us what more you want to sort of showcase on but before i tell you where we're going to take you next saturday i am going to ask sachin that sachin what are your thoughts on how further to take the whole element of the, the tribal unique art forms culture forms food forms so much else uh, into a more touristy how do you think the government of india can work with all of you and that much more to take this beautiful product forward uh, i i think ma'am the the particular aspect is content here uh, there is too much to show uh, if a series of talks or a series of presentations or series of content can be populated based on the tribes and their uh, uh, eco friendliness activities and their appreciation of past uh then it can become a really good responsible tourism product because through this we can also teach and preach people to be responsible leave no trace and take care of the communities so i think there's a lot of content which needs to come in public eye from tourism perspective thanks sachin and uh, professor vankatesha from your perspective because you are you know continuously with the youth of the country the young minds of the country what do you think the government and particularly from the tourism perspective how and what should we be doing more to ensure that our people actually get exposed and they learn and they learn to appreciate and also imbibe in their own lives so much wisdom and so much of uh, splendor that our uh, tribal brothers and sisters have yeah madam uh, it is interesting that our young generation is interested to learn about these people but the problem is they are not actually exposed to many of these aspects so through these webinars certainly we can highlight some of the important things such as changing their lifestyle then their arts and crafts and their belief system also through rituals and practices particularly drum tradition of myth and ritual reenactment how it actually takes place all these things because the belief system is very much essential for any type of community and if we able to concentrate on these things then we can create some sort of curriculum and we can attract the younger generation to look into this at the same time now we are having another responsibility also uh, by promoting these art forms or other things the tribal community will not get much benefit because their socio economic situation is very in a very uh, precarious position so oh, we can attract the government agencies and other ngos to do something for the betterment of these people so in that way this platform certainly can do some wonders it can work as a networking agency right Government. absolutely i think we just need to do that much more and himanshu uh, since you represent the the youth of the country in so many ways i'm not saying i'm old but you are much younger than me uh, how do you think we should be using digital technologies to create further interest for people to actually choose to travel and walk uh, the journey that you all showcase today um uh, ma'am actually uh, this uh, social media helps a major role and uh, and everyone is now on the social media in today's time even if you go to the villages and if you go to the downtown as well uh, social media is a place a very important role uh, the youth has to come they have to learn they have to read about these tribes so they can be more uh, get to knowledge about these particular places we are visiting already known places but there are beautiful places in those regions so like chatisgarh charkhand there are beautiful, uh, beautiful places and the practices what they are doing it's very uh, recommendable and it's like a a journey for the knowledge as well so reading and spreading the knowledge through these kind of webinars will de definitely help them to get gain more about the tribes right thank you so much imanchu and i'm going to add one more task for all of you that don't just keep looking at webinars don't just keep because yes we have to wear our masks remain safe keep distant and definitely get vaccinated if you haven't got both your vaccines 
please make sure that you follow the protocol of the time gap and everything and do get vaccinated because it works. It helps uh, to save yourself from any possible onslaught of uh, COVID. So do keep safe. But in each of your cities, go on Google right now, go on the TriFed uh, website of TriFed, or even if you were to Google otherwise and say travel museums in India, you'll be surprised. There is a museum in your city. You probably never even thought about it. It just didn't cross your mind. Doesn't matter. You can still do it. So look up, look up your city wherever you are. Look up the city that you're traveling to and see that if there is something interesting from the tribal uh, uh, aspect of our country, go and visit these museums. And the TriFed also keeps doing a lot of uh, the, the hearts and the bazaars, the craft bazaars. So pick up those small souvenirs. You're encouraging someone to keep their art form alive every time that you patronize it and take it. So do eat that interesting food. Do pick a small art form. Encourage, encourage everyone. Because otherwise, we, the incredible India, will lose our incredibleness if we don't work together to preserve what is so special and what is so unique about each one of us, each one of us. And therefore, making your own food forms in the way that you want to make them, making those small little art forms, whether it could be a painting, it could be a metal craft, it could be embroidery, it could be anything. You know, so, so let's encourage everyone to, to be able to preserve because it's important to be able to support everyone through buying their products also. You go and see, but you do buy also. So I think these are some of the sentiments that I would want to share with all the incredible friends who have joined in, not just from India, but from across the world. Someone has been asking, I think Nina, that is Hornbill happening this year? Nina, we are hoping, yes, that Hornbill will happen. Fingers crossed on that, that yes, things will remain good with us. But uh, for now, yes, Hornbill is supposed to happen. Interestingly, the Ministry of Tourism will also be preceding it with an international travel mart just a little before Hornbill happens. So if all of you are there in Nagaland at that point in time, do see what we will also be showcasing as part of the international travel mart, which will roll out at the end of November tentatively and will kind of flow into Hornbill that happens in our beautiful state of Nagaland. So for today, I think we've had a very, very interesting and very unique and very different walking with the tribals and learning just that little bit. We always try to whet your appetite and we are sure that you will be interested in knowing more and more about these amazing uh, parts of culture of our country. So thank you so much viewers for joining in, tuning in, supporting us on the 98th uh, webinar. Next time is 99th. And we're gonna take you into the dry but very historic, architecturally very splendid part of our country, Bikaner. Who hasn't eaten the Bikaneri Bhujia? If you haven't, go this week, pick up that crisp and tikha uh, mirchi wala Bikaneri Bhujia, chomp on it, wait for us next Saturday morning. We're going to be back and taking you to the gullies and the lanes of the beautiful city of Bikaner. Thank you, viewers. देखते रहिए और दिखाते रहिए अपना सुंदर अतुल्य भारत नमस्ते